Yeah, now the group that we hopscotched three times is passing us again. So I don't know if they're like a support group. Funny, they don't carry radios. You'd think, like, being all the way out here, they'd have radios. Is it G? I cannot believe how fast he's moving. Truck passing days and lights out. Bye, bicycles. It's probably a worse walk than rise, too. Pretty high up, it looks like there's one that's going to be coming down. He's uh, after maybe the first switchback. He's going to get to those other guys head on now. 10-4. One more pull out right here as well. Plenty of space. The White Rim Road was built in the early 1950s by the Atomic Energy Commission in order to provide access to the uranium deposits in the area. These mines were soon abandoned due to a lack of production. The route generally circles around the island in the sky area of the Canyonlands National Park, formed by the Green River to the west and the Colorado to the east. The road actually predates the park, which wasn't established until 1964. The name comes from the white sandstone formation that forms the edge of the driving surface. The White Rim Road is 100 miles long and can be traversed either clockwise or counterclockwise. The road is mostly sandy with a few rocky sections. Since some areas are too narrow for two cars to pass and backing down some of the hills would not be fun, it's good to have a buddy with a radio or a spotter before driving up or down the steeper sections, especially at Mineral Flats, Murphy's Hogback, and Schaefer Trail. In March of this year, a group of Sierra Adventure vehicles from Truckee, California, traveled out to Moab to check off this bucket list trail. Our group decided to tackle the route in the counterclockwise direction. We started at Mineral Bottom, airing down just after leaving the pavement. Mineral Bottom is a long, tight, but well-graded switchback that takes you from the main road used to reach the Island in the Sky Visitor Center down into the canyon. From there, the road follows along the river for several miles before entering the National Park. We pass the Labyrinth Campground and the tightest rock overhangs of the trip. Advertised as 9 foot 6 clearance, we estimated these rocks to be closer to 10 foot 6. The next challenging section is called Hard Scrabble, which is noted for its steep grade, loose rock, and significant exposure. This caused a few passengers in our group to get out and help spot. An early start for day two allowed our group to pass through the candlestick area with the sun still low on the horizon, making for great views. The steepest section of day two is known as Murphy's Hogback, named after Otho Murphy, one of the cattlemen that grazed cows in the area in the early 1900s. Otho was also a prospector, justice of the peace, and county attorney who actually sued Grand County over a salary dispute. He even wrote a children's book called The Moab Story. Murphy's Hogback is very scenic as you drive up the long, steep ridge with views off both sides for much of the climb. This is another area with overhanging rock, but these seemed higher or easier to avoid than Labyrinth. That evening, after our longest day on the trail, we camped at Airport Campground below Airport Tower, a sandstone butte named because its shape resembles an airport control tower. Our last day on the trail provided our first views of the Colorado River near Lathrop Trail, named after sheep herder Howard Lathrop, who grazed his flock here in the early 1940s. Sheep herding was halted in the 1960s when the road became part of the National Park. The next dozen miles or so are flat and faster than much of the day before. Sandy roads allow for smooth sailing and a little dust. A worthy stop is Musselman Arch, which is more of a land bridge than a conventional arch. Traffic seemed to pick up more on the third afternoon as we reached Schaefer Trail and the intersection of Potash Road. These two roads can be linked up for a day trip that does not require the backcountry permits our group needed. Schaefer Trail is an experience all in itself. The road is named after John Sog Schaefer. From a family of Mormon pioneers, Sog improved the road in, the, in 1916 for grazing cattle. The road was used for ranching and mining all the way up to the point when it became part of the National Park. 
The road is long and steep with more than a dozen switchbacks. Radio communication and spotting for those in your group, both above and below you, were key. After reaching the top of Schaefer Trail, we turned onto the pavement, aired up, and headed back to Moab. While a group dinner is always a good way to share memories and photos, it will take some time for this epic adventure to fully set in. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Sierra Adventure Vans and Sierra Adventure Vehicles. And you can always reach out to us at info at sierraadventurevehicles.com to find out where we're headed next. <laughs>